Well, uh, like I said, I read through the book, but before the interview, I went through and kind of reviewed it and so forth about some of the concepts. Um, I think one of the most important concepts in the book is that the rich dad feels that wealth is measured in time, whereas the poor dad feels that wealth is measured in money. Can you explain that? That's a very, I'm glad you really have done your research, man. I'm proud of you. See, a lot of people want to get rich. And what my, that was my poor dad. So I'll make a lot more money. So he got a high paying job and he kept going back to school, you know, so he get a more high pay. And my rich dad says, no, it's measured in wealth is measured in time. The greatest thing money can buy is freedom. And it's important to understand what freedom is. It's not the ability to do everything you want to do. The richest people in the world, there's still a lot that they want to do that they can't do. Freedom is the ability to not have to do the things you don't want to do. So if you quit your job, how long can you survive? So the average person, I don't know what the averages are anymore, but the average American cannot survive more than a month. Yeah, before the savings or the bill collectors drag them off to jail or something. Okay, this is not necessarily true. Yes, most Americans have very little in savings and they would run through their savings pretty quickly. However, there's no such thing as debtors jailed in America. They're not going to jail if you run out of money. You're going to have to do something that may be a little bit embarrassing and that's rely on friends and family. But keep that in mind as you become more successful. Keep good relationships with friends and family. Not only will they emotionally and spiritually empower you to go on to be more successful, but they are your safety net when things don't go well. And on the path to success, there will be times when things don't go well. In the same regard, you have to be ready to be their safety net as well. Again, it does not necessarily have to be just financially, but it can just be in terms of good words. If you surround yourself by winners and they're having a bad day or a bad month or a bad year, you remind them that they are someone who's going to succeed and going to stick with things even when times get tough in the same way that they are there to support you as well. So a lot of Americans make a lot of money, but they have no time on their money. They cannot survive. So it's a very important question. I mean, it's probably one of the most important questions you can ask that we should ask the people listening. If you lost your job, let's say you're married, husband and wife and all this stuff, you know, and you lost your income, how long would you survive? And that's wealth. And so that's why today uh, my wealth will go on for generations. You hope. However, wealth is not just about how much money you have, how much money you have coming in. It is about making sure that you have taught your family and children the proper habits and discipline and means of being frugal when necessary and humble so that they don't blow through it. I'm not going to go through the whole story of the Vanderbilts and how they lost all their money and how other families, the Rockefellers and Kennedys, were able to keep it. But if Robert Kiyosaki thinks his family is going to be able to keep the fortune he's created for generations, it's going to depend not just on the amount of money he made, but on the values that he passes on. You know, because I have real assets. I thank you for that question, Vlad. It's probably the most important question you could ask me. Wealth is measured in time, rich is measured in money. Yeah, one of the best definitions I've ever heard of the term rich is the ability to maintain your current lifestyle for the estimated rest of your life without having any new income. Which means there are two ways to wealth. One way is to increase the amount of money you have. The other way is to decrease your expenses. You could actually become very wealthy simply by not requiring much. If you're used to living in a mansion and you have a Ferrari, and you can maintain that for the next 30, 40, 50 years without any new money coming in, you're rich. Correct. If, you know, losing your job, you suddenly have to move into an apartment and go get a Honda Civic, then it doesn't matter how many things you have at the time, you know, you're not really rich. Correct. Yep. And the thing is, is, is one more thing that Rich Dad added to it is if you lose your job, uh, and you stop work, or you stop working, how long will you survive? Could you, I mean, you don't have to lose your job and say, if you stop working, how long would you survive? And the bigger issue is not whether you lose your job, it's whether you lose your ambition. 
And for most people, it's the next paycheck. Yeah. They're gone. So they might make a lot of money, but they won't survive so that they have money, but they're not wealthy. Wealth is measured in time. So if I, if I stop today, my wealth will go on for probably a hundred something years. But I'm, I'm putting all that, my wife and I putting all back in charities to what's called a CRT, Charitable Remainder Trust. So our wealth can go on for generations. Hopefully. Work hard, be frugal, surround yourself with the right people, and never give up, and you will be plenty wealthy. Thank you.